Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. I'm Kirsten O'Connor in for Bridget Ellison. And I'm Justin Mormuth. The governor sat down with anchor Matt Austin this morning and wrapped up just minutes ago. So let's get right out to Matt live at Hilton Bonnet Creek Resort in Orlando. Matt. Guys, just ran over here about 10 minutes ago, had a wide ranging exclusive one on one 30 minute interview with the governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis. We talked about a lot of topics. I want to show you right now we have a live look inside the roundtable discussion. He is currently in town for the Florida Transportation Builders Association. He is leading a roundtable discussion right now. In fact, right before he went in there, he was speaking with me. Now, the governor and I spoke on a range of topics. We talked a lot about schools, economy, the unemployment issues our state has run across. And it was a very interesting interview on that range of topics. As we come back out here live, obviously today we just surpassed in our state 8,000 deaths from COVID-19. We have surpassed 500,000 cases days ago here in the state of Florida. And I asked the governor if his tone back in May might have impacted these rising numbers. I have to ask you, you've, you've caught some criticism from your tone back in May, like when you were with the vice president and when you did your press conferences back then, you sort of, you seem to be saying the experts blew it. Florida didn't get it as badly as we could have. And since then, obviously, uh, the cases and the deaths have gone up. Had you had a different tone at that point, do you think Floridians would have taken this virus more seriously? They took, they took it seriously. Floridians have done a good job. But let me just go back. There were specific predictions about Florida being overwhelmed in the hospitals, massive death by mid-April. And that was being blared all across the, 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 the country. Uh, people were getting really frightened. And then when it didn't happen, what a lot of the, some of these organizations were saying was, oh, Florida's just hiding everything. They're high. So they were accusing the Department of Health of hiding numbers. So I took umbrage of that. I think it was conspiracy theory. It was not based in fact. Um, and I made, I made my displeasure known. But um, Floridians have taken this seriously. I mean, and just think about what we were doing in May leading into June, uh, massive expansion of a testing apparatus, PPE, every hospital had all the PPE they needed. We sent massive PPE to the nursing homes. We were facilitating therapeutics, whether it's remdesivir, convalescent plasma, and then we established over 20 COVID-only nursing facilities so that seniors could safely be isolated if they happened to be COVID positive. So we were building to prepare, because we didn't know, it's an uncertain thing. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that thought, oh, it's gonna come back with a vengeance in the fall. Well, it turns out, you know, throughout the whole Sun Belt, we've seen the exact same viral curve uh, happen over the summer, but we were prepared for it. We've been able to handle it. When hospitals asked us to help, we were there, uh, w whether it's testing, whether it's PPE, with hel helping the nursing homes. Uh, so we were prepared and we were able to, um, you know, to get through the, the highest point that we faced, which was probably mid-July. Your recent eviction moratorium, the wording changed uh, in the order that you signed, and, and we noticed that there wasn't an announcement or anything, and, and some local judges are worried that there could be a flood of folks receiving eviction notices. Now, it says you can't finalize the eviction, but are you concerned that a lot of people are going to be getting these eviction notices in the mail, and they're not going to be expecting it? Well, I don't think so, because if you look at it, I mean, you know, anyone that's had any kind of hardship because of the coronavirus is the same as it's been uh, throughout the whole time. But at the same time, if you're somebody that's just been working and, and hasn't lost a job or had any negative impacts from this, now obviously you just have to pay the bills. And so, so that's, it just draws a distinction between folks that have been affected by this, lost their job, lost their income, been ill, had to care for a family member, I mean, anything connected to that, you know, would obviously still apply. So again, we talked about a lot of things at schools we spent a lot of time on as well, including how Hillsborough County just yesterday said they were going to do virtual school for four weeks instead of the usual two like some other schools. He found some problems with that. In fact, he hinted that they could be at risk of losing some funding if them or maybe other school districts tried to delay even more. So we are going to have pieces of this interview for you throughout the day, and I'm going to send it back to you guys in the studio.